It's not often a clear-cut Hall of Famer ends up switching teams, however that's exactly what happened this offseason as Earl Thomas has now left the Seahawks to become a Baltimore Raven. A lot of people are talking about how Earl Thomas is getting up there in age and he's just coming off a major injury, so there is definitely some question marks for Baltimore. However, personally, I very much like the signing. A large part of that, in my opinion, is one of the key things that has made Earl Thomas so good for so long isn't his speed or his strength, but it's his awareness. He's always been one of the most smart players in the league, and here, I'll show you what I mean with this play. As you see on this play, it's going to be a cover one linebacker blitz, and take a look at that Packers route right there, as it's a simple flat route to the top half of the screen, and this play is pretty simple. Rodgers hits him, the receiver tries to outrun the safety as fast as he can, and pick up 7 or 8 yards. Typically, unless there's a broken tackle, this is not going to be a touchdown, however, it can result in a solid gain, so that's why they're running it. But take a look at Earl Thomas here. Basically, the second Aaron Rodgers starts to throw the ball, he's breaking in and ready to make a tackle. Well, yes, he is very fast, and yes, he is a great tackler. Really, what made him so effective on this play was the fact that he read this play so quickly. He quickly realized that the Packer he's in charge of guarding is going to be running a flat route, and quickly knew he had to get to him and make a tackle. That one might not make a ton of highlight reels, but it really was a great play by Earl Thomas. And in fact, this next play definitely won't make any Earl Thomas highlight reels, However, I do think it shows how Earl Thomas is very aware and does know what's going on. As you see, it's a cover one play, so he's the only safety back. This means that if he breaks in and it turns out to be play action and someone throws over him, it could be an easy touchdown if they can beat their one-on-one -on -one coverage. So basically, Earl Thomas has to make sure he plays as far back until he's absolutely sure that it's a run, because no matter what, he cannot get fooled by a play action. And this play actually is going to be a run, but take a look at Earl Thomas. Basically, the second the ball is handed off, he realizes what's going on and breaks in to try to stop a run. And granted, he doesn't end up getting into the play. The play is stopped well before he gets anywhere. However, if the halfback was able to get past that initial line of defense, Thomas could have been in position to make a play. If that was a good play by Green Bay, the chances are it still isn't going to go for 8 yards because Thomas broke in and was ready to make a play. One of the things I always talk about on this channel is awareness, knowing what to do in each situation. And for one of those reasons, it's just because I think that's a fun thing to do. I think a video would be pretty boring if I just talked about how much a certain player can bench press. I want to talk about how they can be aware of what's going on on the field. And that's kind of why I like Earl Thomas so much, is because he is one of the most aware players in this league. Like on this play, for example, it's going to be a cover four zone. And what the Packers are going to do here is actually a screen pass. We're going to send two Packers out the block. And then they're going to send another receiver out to the top half of the screen. But take a look at Earl Thomas here. He's not getting blocked on this play. The whole point of this play is to get it to the receiver and have him outrun Earl Thomas to the outside and maybe even turn the corner and get him past Earl Thomas. While getting past Earl Thomas is no easy feat, that probably wouldn't happen. It is very conceivable that you could pick up 7 or 8 yards on even a really good safety. However, Earl Thomas is a little bit above just a really good safety. He breaks in instantly, realizes what's going on, and makes a tackle for just a couple of yards of a gain, which is just crazy given the situation. And also, it should be mentioned that on a play like this, people will notice his insane acceleration as he did move very quickly to make that tackle. But I think it's worth mentioning that we don't know if Earl Thomas' play is going to drop off. He was playing very good at the start of last season before his injury, I personally think that there's a very good chance that his play will be as good as it was last year. The reality is, having a guy like Earl Thomas just opens up so much for a defense. Oftentimes you think of a defense and you think they have to have 11 strong players who all do their job or it's not going to work out well. But the reality is, Earl Thomas can make up for someone else not being able to win their one-on-one -on -one matchup. Like on a play like this, for example, it's going to be a cover one robber, meaning he's in charge of guarding that middle of the screen. So what's actually going to happen on this play is there is a Falcon running that route right there and it will get into Earl Thomas' zone. However, look at how far away Earl Thomas is. He's on the complete opposite side of the field, so chances of him getting over there that quickly are slim, especially because he would have to read the defense defense first and then get over there so even the great Earl Thomas isn't going to be able to do that but take a look at Earl Thomas on this play he's watching Matt Ryan all the way that's one of the things I've always loved about Earl Thomas is he does such a great job of reading quarterbacks eyes he's always focused on where the quarterback is looking if you're the type of quarterback who stares down receivers against Earl Thomas it's not going to be good news for you and here's exactly why Earl Thomas right now is looking at Matt Ryan and take a look at where Matt Ryan is looking he's now looking at his receiver that he wants to throw it to and since there is a pretty good situation situation going on over there, that's where he's going to try to throw the ball. Thomas can now get a head start running over in that direction before Ryan throws the ball, and he ends up knocking the ball out of the receiver's hands. He really can cover so much ground. You know, when there's that common comparison of safeties to center fielders, he really fits that comparison of being, you know, one of those center fielders that can cover a ton of ground. Like on this play, for example. 
It's a cover one linebacker blitz and those that are routes that the Falcons will be running and they have a perfect route to beat this coverage. It's a slant route right there and this play should work 100 out of 100 times really. I mean obviously you have to win your one-on-one -on -one matchup and you have to make a good throw. Those aren't things that are givens. However, this is about as good of a situation as you can ask for if you're Atlanta. And also Earl Thomas is in coverage here. He's the one safety back so this means that once again he can't let anyone get past him or it could be a touchdown. But take a look at what he's going to do here. First, he reads Matt Ryan, and once again, he notices that Matt Ryan is staring down a receiver. So then, he's simply just going to break in. This was a catch, however, it could have been a much worse catch had Earl Thomas not broken in. I mean, this is the kind of thing that can easily go for 30, 40 yards. This is the kind of thing that can go for a touchdown if the receiver makes a good play, because against man coverage, Earl Thomas is the only guy who can make a play. But not only does he avoid a big gain, but he actually turns it into just a medium gain. They do get the first down, they get the catch, but that's going to happen. Sometimes a corner is going to get beat on a slant route on a cover one linebacker blitz when a receiver is able to get open. I mean, that just happens. That's football. You can't expect that to not happen. But having a guy like Earl Thomas can minimize that damage, and that's huge, because instead of having a play like that happen that results in you getting a ton of yards, you have to make four or five of those plays happen to get a scoring drive, and that makes things so much tougher in the NFL. Thomas has always been really good in those situations, and he always knows when to break in, and he can even break in when he's not necessarily in conventional positioning. Like, take this one for example. The Seahawks are going to be blitzing, so they're going to be sending five men to rush the passer on this play, and it's also going to be man coverage, so those are the Seahawks who are responsible of covering those Falcons. And this should be good news for the Falcons, as they have a simple crossing route right there that should easily get open. But take a look at where Earl Thomas is. Typically, a safety would be much farther back and much more to the middle of the screen in this kind of play because you're the only safety in this play. But Thomas is actually in a much different position. And the reason he's doing this is because of disguise. This way, you don't exactly know what kind of play the Seahawks are running. However, the problem with this would seemingly be that now he'd be very out of position, especially for a crossing route like this, because he'd have to break just as fast as he can downfield. And typically, they could throw easily underneath him. However, take a look at what he's going to do here. He takes a couple of steps back, but then realizes that there is a route going right in that direction, and so he's going to break in and break up the play. Against pretty much every safety in the league, this is a completion. However, Earl Thomas sort of has a sixth sense when it comes to these football plays, and he really can move in and make plays, really just by reading the defenses so quickly. He's such a tough guy to fool, and this play will probably better show you that. As you see, it's a cover two zone, and what Cincinnati is going to do here is have a receiver run around towards the middle of the screen, which then, in theory, will get Earl Thomas to move up towards the top half of the screen and then the route can actually cut to the bottom half of the screen and it should be an easy route for a receiver to get open since the receiver is running deep it basically becomes a man coverage so it's all about earl thomas winning his one-on-one -on -one matchup here if you look this is working out okay for cincinnati but not really great for cincinnati as you see earl thomas is doing a pretty good job of basically just staying aligned with where the receiver is whichever way the receiver cuts he then can cut in that direction as well and he has pretty much just as good a chance of getting there as the receiver would he's then fast enough that when he does cut he's able to jump the route and get an interception out of it Really, the key there was, I think, his intelligence on that play. He realized what was going on, saw when the receiver was going to cut, and then was able to jump the route and get an interception. In football, if you're a great safety like Earl Thomas, you don't necessarily have to stay in your assigned zone if that's not what the play calls for. Earl Thomas definitely doesn't always do that, but then the question becomes, what happens when he doesn't do it and it fails for the Seahawks? Then can't other teams take advantage of it? Like, take this play, for example. It's going to be a cover three zone, and what the Panthers are going to do here is actually have a receiver right there who's going to be running a route that gets into that gap in coverage. So, in theory, then Earl Thomas would break in and cover up that gap, and then they can have another receiver run that route, which will get into where Earl Thomas was initially in charge of covering, and in theory will allow Cam Newton to throw it over him. If you take a look right now, this play is actually working out perfectly for Carolina. Earl Thomas does, in fact, break in, and now there should be a receiver open past him. But look at how quickly Earl Thomas comes back on this play. This was a good read by Cam Newton. This is where Cam Newton should have thrown the ball. However, Earl Thomas was just too athletic on this play. He got back so quickly, and he was able to pick the ball off. Again, I know people are going to be concerned about his age and about the fact that he is coming off a big injury, so maybe he won't be able to make these great athletic plays like this one was. But personally, I think he still will be able to. I think chances are he will be able to. I think players are playing longer and longer than they ever have, and players are coming back from injuries quicker than they ever have. So I still have faith that Earl Thomas can be successful next season. I mean, sure, Thomas is getting up there in age, but the safety they had last season was Eric Weddle, who was 33. So I definitely think that Thomas can be successful in this Ravens defense. Speaking of Eric Weddle, I think it is worth mentioning that Eric Weddle, while he was a free safety, he played a lot more strong than Earl Thomas would. 
However, they have Tony Jefferson, who can really play strong or free, but really thrives in strong, in my opinion. So I fully expect him to be most of the strong safety and Thomas to be most of the free safety, which is where Thomas thrives and where Jefferson thrives. One of the reasons I do like this signing from Baltimore's perspective is the fact that they could use another safety now that Weddle is gone. Like, take this play for example, it's going to be a cover one hole, and Weddle is in charge of guarding a receiver. However, this isn't going to be a passing play, this is going to be a run to the top half of the screen, meaning that Weddle can't worry about the guy he's supposed to be covering, he's supposed to run in and make a tackle on the play. But this actually isn't going to be a passing play, and it's going to be a running play, so really what Weddle has to do here is not worry about who he's supposed to cover, and instead run in and try to make a play on the running back. That's going to be exactly what he does, and he creates a tackle for a loss, which is really a great play by a safety, because he has so much to do already, but then to run over and be able to make a tackle on a loss is really a great play by a Raven safety, and it really is a great play but it's also the kind of play that Earl Thomas seems to make look routine. I'm not going to sit here and say that Earl Thomas is as good of a run stopper as Eric Weddle because I don't think he is. That's not where he thrives. Where he really thrives is on a play like this. This is going to be a cover three zone, and it's going to be a play action, and then Denver is going to have a route that's going to be ran right there. So Weddle is the guy to watch here. The whole point of this play is just try to force Weddle in, and then throw it over him and try to get a completion. Weddle does in fact think that it's going to be a run, and he rushes in, which now allows receiver to get wide open past him. I'm not showing this play because I think Eric Weddle is a bad safety by any means. That's not the point at all of why I'm doing this. My point really is that Weddle is good at everything, but he will make mistakes in the passing game, and the reality is... While everyone makes mistakes in the passing game, Earl Thomas makes very few. He's one of the smartest players to ever live, really. I mean, he's just a, such a smart guy. He always knows what's going on, and I definitely think he's going to be a huge benefit to this Ravens defense. <laughs>